Hey, good morning, everybody. I've lowered my coffee intake. I'm only down to about two cups every day. I'm filled with bread and cheese. Uh, it's kind of gross. Uh, but anyway, here we are. And you, what you're looking at is presumably a stand of Ericaria bernieri. There's about 13 species of Ericaria here in New Caledonia. Uh, a lot of them uh, tend to look the same, so you got to really get up close, either look at the cones or look at the foliage, and even then it can be kind of tricky. Uh, we're basically going uphill. we got the quite a ways to go as you can see we uh we benefit a little bit from the help of a truck from uh, the research institute which was able to drop us off at about 500 meters so it is a bit cooler than the uh, uh hot as balls lowlands but uh, we still got about i don't know another two or three thousand feet to go up should be pretty nice again these air carriers are relics of gondwana land uh, new caledonia broke off from gondwana about 80 million years ago then it's presumed it was a uh, well, there's a whole bunch of tectonic action going on. you got like two different subduction zones, both to the north and the east. But uh, during the Eocene, it's presumed that the, the entire island of uh, New Caledonia was submerged uh, under the ocean for a while. Uh, not sure if that's 100%, but uh, it, it is what's uh, it's the, it's the, the, the theory as of now. Uh, so it's either, either the stuff that uh, all these ancient lineages that, that exist here either recolonized or they found some refugia while most of the island was uh, was uh, underwater. But anyway, all that aside, all you got to know is that New Caledonia does contain a lot of relic lineages like these Jurassic Age conifers. I mean, these are the same, it's believed these are the same uh, family, the same general clad of uh, trees that uh, you could find in uh, Petrified Forest National Park uh, over there by uh, uh, Arizona over there. What is it? Where the hell is it? And uh, I forget the name of it. The Eagles wrote a song about it and I hate the fucking Eagles, but uh, I have been at a time before. It's kind of nice. You know, they got a taqueria or two I like. Anyway, we're going to keep moving on up. Just wanted to show you this nice vista, this nice view. And there you go, Eric Carey of Bernie Eri. And uh, over there you got uh, another member of that family, that old lineage. It's uh, Agathis lanceolata. Okay, here we go. Okay, there you go. There's a species of Phylanthus, Phylanthaceae. You can see those tiny exile flowers just coming off uh, right there near the uh, petiole of the leaves. You got the uh, fruits of yellow berry. There you go. Nice up close. Those uh, leaf undersides got a nice uh, waxy white color to them. And then on the top, uh, they're kind of, well, these are kind of speckled. But uh, the new foliage is looking pretty smooth. As you can see, it's doing that monocolous thing which uh, many plants do here. And there's actually a couple papers on it. Some kid wrote his PhD uh, on it, uh, like a 300 page uh, thesis on uh, the monocolous habit and it, how it's conver evolutionarily convergent among uh, many New Caledonian plants. And it's, again, it's no one really knows why. They just kind of, is this a metrosideros or what? It is a mertaceous bastard, whatever it is, but I can't really find any wonderful imbricate there. Uh, leaf thing going on you know but uh no one really knows why the monocolous habit evolved it's just an old mining road real beat the shit back there that's why we had to park the truck so no one knows why the monocolous habit evolved but it's thought that it's basically a way to conserve energy in a nutrient poor soil and many of these trees you grow them off this nutrient poor soil as you can see geez i think that's from a wildfire and just from the mine but you can really see those eric carry a burning air i down there but that monocolous habit, again, uh, just the way to conserve energy in this nutrient-poor soil, which is, you know, highly limiting in both uh, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. It's probably potassium, too, you know. So, you basically, you just get one single stem. You're doing a candelabra thing, you know. Just like Liberace, where you just shed all your lower branches, and you just, uh, perfect example right there with that uh, myotocarpus. Endemic genus. Okay, moving right along. Look at the Dracophyllum too. They look totally different here. You believe that's related to blueberries? I think those might even be the same species back there. Maybe not. I don't know, but they're both Dracophyllums. Both those guys right there. Again, Ericaceae blueberry family. Ah, oh, look at that. You can tell that's a Protea. Proteaceae. Just from looking at their foliage. Possibly a Stenocarpus. Possibly some kind of... I don't think it's a Grevillea. Could be another Protea. Look at that new foliage, though. Beautiful color on it. You know, the leaves on many of the plants out here are, are just as engaging as the flowers, if not more so, you know? A lot of that uh, beautiful undersides going on. Almost sounds kind of dirty, 
you know, but you can make anything uh, referring to plants dirty if you wanted to. Uh, you know, better dirty than hateful, at least in terms of the modern world. Yeah, that's a really, it's some uh, lovely foliage, proteaceae probably. Okay, here's a nice place to illustrate what's going on with the Ultramafic Dungeon. You can see the top two feet, maybe three or four feet of this uh, road cut is red. It's because it's weathered, all the uh, the nickel and the magnesium has been leached out to the lower uh, lower extremities of this road cut. And up top you just got that iron rich stuff going on. So that's where you get a lot of these lateritic, uh, you know, basically iron muds. You know, a lot of the soil, you can see a lot of the soil is just red. Look at that over there. See? It's because they've been leached. So there's a lot different stuff going on with serpentine in a tropical moist environment. So, uh, you know, as opposed to a, a desert or a Mediterranean climate where it's dry half the year. You just, it's its a lot warmer. There's a lot more vegetation cover going on. Uh, a lot more probably tannins and of course just warmer temperatures and lots of water. Lots, lots of water. Up to two meters a year in some places on this island. You know, it is a... There is rainforest there. And so what it does is it just leaches that rock. So you can see where it's not been weathered yet. It's still blue. It looks like nice blue uh, serpentine and soapstone just like we get in California. But up there at the top, it's it's very red. You know, and again, that's just weathering and oxidation of the iron in there, etc. But you see it all over the place. So, and again, it's just, you know, it does look, it looks like a, like our nice uh, California grade serpentine. See, there's just where the mud fell down. And now, this other thing, too, this mud hardens again. So it weathers and it kind of turns oozy and whatever the shit, especially when it's wet. And then, you know, once it comes back, once it settles again and is uh, deposited again, it just kind of hardens. And in some places, it does lithify. It turns back into a rack. There you go. There's a nice egg at this. Looks like uh, that might be Ovada. Another Jurassic uh, dinosaur tree. It uh, somehow made it through to the Anthropocene. You know, just squeeze through the closing garage door of, uh, you know, two or three mass extinctions and uh, made it through to the present. What are all those dead trees are down there? Hey, you got Costularia, Cyperaceae, a lot of Cyperaceae here. Beautiful piece of serpentine. And uh, my autocarpus, I believe. I can't see the flowers, but yeah, I'm assuming it's my autocarpus. There we go. There's an egg of this Ovada. Got a real nice form to it. You can see these just, they turn into massive trees. You know, we're up at about 2,300 feet right now. Look at this grevillea right here. The undersides of that foliage are just as beautiful, if not more so, than the flowers. Of course, it's not flowering, so I can't compare, but and this, that's another convergent trait among a lot of the plants here. They got these really beautiful kind of rusty undersides. Not sure what the rust color is about, though. Not sure what the evolutionary benefit that it confers to the plant. A nice money shot of the bark on that agatus. Again, air carriaceae, the uh, Jurassic conifers. So, you know, we weren't sure if there was going to be any water up here, but uh, it seems there is. So since we weren't carrying, since we weren't sure there was going to be too much water, we decided to carry all of it. So I'm actually carrying about 60 or 70 pounds of bullshit on my back. But uh, this is actually pretty easy. I mean, this is a good road. You know? So, uh, being it's so easy, I'm going to expect it to either thunderstorm on us tonight. I don't got a tarp or nothing. Or uh, maybe I'll come down with some strange flu or some shit. Because it can't be 100%, you know? Got to think like a Chicagoan. You know, something's got to go wrong. Anyway, I'll check back in with you. Well, nice, uh, nice uh, exemplar of... Uh, all that, uh, all that serpentine at Ultramafic's just weathering. See, very unstable. The surface, not a, not a, not a rock that holds on too long under the uh, once it's exposed to the atmosphere. You know, here's a here's a real butte. You can see it almost got kind of a coalescent habit. It's a Drosera, New Caledonia's only Drosera, Drosera neocaledonica. One of the sundews. You know, surprised there's not more carnivorous plants here. Surprised these didn't uh, get here and then radiate and diversify. You know, you got Nepenthes, you got a Utricularia, and then you got this Drosera. These are pretty uh, scrawny ones. You can see there's quite a few more. I've seen them. They get a little bit bigger than this, but not much. You know, just holding uh, hold strong despite the, how dry it is. And I guess New Caledonia is in a drought right now. 
probably got something to do with those uh, ocean temperatures and currents and whatever the shit. Same thing that uh, was causing the recent Australian drought. I mean, it all really comes down to ocean temperatures, temperatures and currents. Uh, when you know, whenever you're talking about the droughts, it seems. I mean, I should shut the fuck up. I'm not a meteorologist, but I mean, another cyperacea right here. It's not a grass. It's very spiny. You can see drosseras everywhere. Ain't that nice? There you go. There's a nice shot, a nice money shot of that cone and this uh, agathis. Nice glaucous blue foliage, you know, protecting the uh, protecting the uh, the softies. You know, much different from the uh, last year's foliage, that green stuff. Very green and waxy, different color. Got the glaucous, maybe got a slight, oh, looks like you got a slight farina right there. See that? Where my uh, greasy hands wiped it off. Now, this is a species of Codia, Cunoniaceae, that I haven't seen yet. Rather beautiful one, too. Blue fuzzy uh, adaxial uh, upper sights and then uh, rusty uh, fuzzy uh, abaxial under sights. The distinctive fruits, too. I guess that's technically uh, a capitulum. But it's a stunner. I haven't seen it. Nice stenocarpus, too. Proteaceae. Oh, look at it. It's an arborescent member of the carrot family. Apiaceae. This is apiopetlum. The lutinum. You can see why they call it that. The lutinum has got some nice fuzz on there. The surface of this uh, upper side of the leaf is pretty, uh, pretty, somewhat rough though. The whole leaf is pretty rough and very coriaceous. It's a new word for that's a new word of the day. Coriaceous, leathery. You can see, yeah, it looks pretty. Uh, it looks pretty apiaceous. Nice umbels. Looks like a member of the carrot family. I mean, it doesn't at all, but that uh, are flowers do. Look at those uh, undersides. Nice, nice texture there. Uh, just growing on the uh, sun-exposed maquis with that uh, iron-rich soil. Okay, so what you're looking at is a parasite. It's a hollow parasite. That is a parasite that can also photosynthesize itself, but also tends to steal from its neighbors. This is a member of the uh, family Santalaceae, which you have quite a few. Exocarpus is a pretty uh, prominent genus. It seems to be parasitizing, uh, perhaps it's the Critium ericarioides. Look at those codias. Cunoniaceae, another codia just uh, going full. Very distinctive uh, flowers right there. There you go. You can see the flowers. It's before they, those uh, capitula, it's before those capitula uh, mature into fruits. In, you know, fruits that kind of look like a sweet gum fruit. But, uh, you know, the, the parasite's just hiding out. You know, thinks we don't see him, but we see him. We know, I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. Those the critiums are. And again, when they get their cones, which again look like berries, they just occur at the ends of those little branches. Okay, there you go. You can see how easily uh, this uh, rock erodes. That was the road at one point. Now it's about, I don't know, 15 feet deep. Again, those ultramaphics, they're not, they're just not, uh, they're not stable. You know, when exposed to the atmosphere, they just weather very easily, very soft, fragile, malleable rack. Actually, it's more brittle and flaky. Uh, now, here you talk about a Gondwanan relic. Here's a real beautiful genus of a member of a beautiful family. This is a species of the southern oaks, the southern beaches. This is not the fagus. The nice Fresenetia coming up. And it, see, look, almost looking like an Arundo. Like some sort of weird bamboo. But it's a member of uh, Pandanaceae. They do that. They just kind of clamber up on whatever they can. We've been seeing them. I've seen some uh, on Moo Mountain the other day. But here, I'll give you a nice money shot of that. Uh, not the Vegas foliage. Indeed, it does look like an oak. Like very shiny eight axial surfaces, very shiny upper surfaces. You can see those buds right there, you know. Got a nice prominent petiole. And uh, again, very leathery, coriaceous. You know, actually, this is being, this is more like cardboard. This is like uh, cardstock paper. 
you know, maybe maybe a slight indumenta mother nah, not really pretty smooth and at the top is extremely smooth very shiny again helps reflect some of that light as well as uh you know uh lose the water so that water doesn't collect just kind of sheds water pretty easily really wish i could get some uh up close shots of some fruits for you but they uh, they all seem to be gone anyway now to Vegas again it's one of those Gondwan and relics you get some in uh, South America get some in Tasmania uh, you might I think you get some in Australia too and uh, you get some in New Caledonia you know just left over from uh, that super continent when it was all mushed together over there look at the colors on this guy you got that new growth with that rusty uh, that rusty color it's it's beautiful and then the old growth, of course, is glaucous, kind of waxy. Maybe got a mild uh, Dennis Farina on there. Just incredible color. So many of the plants here are like that. You know, just the really, you know, drastic differences. High contrast between upper surface and lower leaf surface. And just the, you know, the foliage alone is gorgeous. Oh, right, it's so nice. Temperature's perfect. It's not hot as balls. Got a nice breeze. Even lucky enough to get some running water, some creeks and what the shit. All just down at the New Caledonian Maquis. Now there's something you don't see every day. You really don't see every day. Female cones, megastroboli on the... Uh, Neocalotropsis uh, pantrae, which again is now in the genus uh, Calitris. Supposedly, I don't know, I didn't read the paper. I'm fucking uh, armchair botanist. Anyway, there you go. I've never even seen one of those before. Pretty interesting, though. Just uh, growing on a McKee. What a beautiful plant. Another member of the uh, redwood juniper family, Cupressaceae. Imbricate little lead needles. When our oldest tree is probably a few hundred years. And uh, there you go. There's there's the male cones for Neocalotropsis. You know, like most members of the Cupressaceae, uh, trees are monoecious, meaning that uh, they have both male and female reproductive parts on the same plant. It's supposed to dioecious, where a plant either has male reproductive re reproductive parts or female reproductive parts, and it's totally different from angiosperms, from flowering plants. Which, uh, you know, most of them have uh, flowers that are actually bisexual. The flower itself has both male and female parts on it. You know, it all gets confusing, but you take it, you just you know, settle down a little bit, take it easy, you know, think about it, it makes sense. Anyway, there you go. You can see these are just developing. It's pretty weird, they just occur at the distal ends of those, uh, the distal ends of those uh, branches, of those uh, masses of foliage. Nice Dracaena right there, or excuse me, a Dracophyllum. I always call it a Dracaena because that's what it looks like, but uh, <laughs> completely different family. Hey, you can see there's been a little bit of erosion, but it allows you to see those Neocalotropsis pantuari roots. And how deep they go, you can see them looking all pygmied and wild up there on it. A uh, little bit of uh, open scrub, the Maquis. There's another member of the... Uh, Citrus family, Rutaceae. It looks like it might be a Borinella. Look at it, you got a nice, uh, almost a Krumholtz on this uh, Neocalotropsis. Just growing up against the ridge, just curved by the wind. You got a nice little forest of them down there. Look at all that. It's nice. Just a ton of air carry up top of that ridge. And there you go. Again, just drosterous all over the ground. Tiny. Look at that. We're counting uh, 20 millimeters in diameter.
Look at this, this guy's everywhere. Ubiquitous plant right here, Gracelania. Poesiae. It's a grace. A rather weird grace. But uh, that makes sense because it's in New Caledonia and uh, all the fucking plants are weirder. Again, no native mammals save for uh, flying foxes and uh, homo sapiens. Oh, there we go, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful site right there. Ericaria muleri, probably uh, two or three hundred years old at least. Again, everything extremely slow growing on this uh, very nutrient poor, uh, iron rich, uh, ultramafic soil. some kind of little orchid. You got a little pseudobulb right there. Flowers are spent though. Anyway, you can see this guy's been here for a while and he's just uh, shedding the branches. There's the bark. This thing's got to be ancient. I mean, two or three hundred years is probably a liberal uh, estimate. This guy's probably well over, well over that. You can see the foliage, of course, just has a, a general consistency of uh, of plastic, very smooth. Smooth and imbricate, smooth imbricate breaks. You know, just a uh, Jurassic Age lineage of conifer hanging out in a uh, very remote little uh, mountainous region on the Isle of uh, New Caledonia. I think those are the Critium uh, Ericarioides over there. Okay, and as we get higher up, the vegetation's starting to change. Got another uh, candelabra-looking thing. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's most of the stuff here. Look at that. No no foliage, no leaves on the bottom uh, three-quarters of the plant. This one's pretty interesting, though. You got axile flowers, six petals, and the ciliate margins on those leaves. See how ciliate they are? Huh? Waxy leaf surfaces, but uh, the ciliate margins. A nice indumentum on the bottom, too. Look at all those uh, strigos hairs. You know, protecting those stomata from uh, losing too much uh, water. You know, water taken in the CO2, you don't want them to lose too much uh, H2O. It's a pretty, uh, it's a, that's a stunner right there. Nice stiphelia. Oh, look at this. Looks like uh, an apocynaceous looking bastard. Could be a Marsdenia. Real linear uh, foliage right there. Hey, look at this basin with the, uh, the narrow leaves. Narrow wispy leaves, five fused petals. Sepals, those little red sepals. You kind of have to, you got to get in there to see what's going on. The fern, that member of the uh, glycaniaceae, it's uh, cutting my legs. See little bubbles on the fronts. Looks like little. Uh... Anyway, nice uh, Cunonia right here. Cunoniaceae. Look at that new foliage. Just uh, rife with the anthocyanins. 
Get the silence and the crowd noise with the shit. Protecting that uh, new foliage uh, from the ultraviolet. And there you go, there's our old friend, my autocarpus. Used to be in Aureliaceae, and now it's in its own family. Whole genus is endemic to New Caledonia. There's the inflorescence right there. Quite a few species in this genus. And I get these little galls. You know, I don't know what it, I don't know what the insect is doing it. You know, but there's a guy in there, and each one of those little growths, and they're kind of notorious for it, you know. I mean, uh, I was reading about, uh, reading about him yesterday. Anyway, you can see he's, uh, he's, he's infested. Okay, there's that species of Codia again. What a beautiful plant. Another Cunonia, Cunoniaceae. And over there in the distance, you got uh, quite a few Aracaria mulleri. More uh, dinosaur conifers. Looking, uh, looking pretty weird. Okay, so here we got a seedling of uh, Aracaria mulleri. I can bet this guy is at least 10 or 20 years old. He grow rather slow, but this one seems to be uh, suffering the effects of uh, uh, some small weevil or uh, insect. And indeed, we did just pull one out of here, a little blue guy. I can't, I don't think I can find any more, but they're just burrowing through the foliage. You know, they're not going to kill the tree, but they're going to set it back, and it's already such a slow-growing bastard anyway that... Uh, You can see it's exuding the sap right there. Again, beautiful foliage. And uh, that's that, those guys. Who knows how old those are? Probably three or four hundred years. Hey, here we go. Here's a member of Thymoliaceae, which is uh, quite ubiquitous all over Australia. The genus Pimalea is in that uh, family. This is Somsia calophylla. If I could just find a goddamn flower here, I just had one. There you go. Nice little four-petaled guy. With the, the, you know, everything's velvety, of course, not surprising. Top surface of the leaves are waxy, undersides are pretty velvety. Ooh, look at, look at that venation, ooh. Four petals, uh, eight stamens. Flower's kind of spent, but you could still get a feel for what's going on. Remember other genus in that family's Pimalea. There you go. There you go, nice up close to that uh, Ericaria mulleri. Nice little population of them here. Got that uh, cordyline neocaledonic over there, asparagaceae. Got that glycania fern everywhere. This thing is everywhere. Nice boulder of, uh, seems to be peridotite or gabbro. Got some dieback, probably from that uh, weevil. Oh yeah, this is nice. Again, another plant. Don't even have flowers, but it looks good enough as is. Dubuzidia, Leo Carpaceae. And this is another Southern Hemisphere, predominantly Southern Hemisphere family. Saw one of these in Chile. Velvety fruit. Not quite ripe yet. Of course, missed the flower, but uh, yeah, whatever. There's those leaves. Again, rusty and momentum underneath. This, well, I guess golden in this case. And a waxy, uh, waxy at axial surface. So many plants like that. Nice Aracaria mulleri. This little seedling. I think he's got a cone on him. Okay, here we are at the base of that there, Carrie Mueller. You can see the trunk's just covered in little uh, pathetic orchids. It's got a nice pseudo bulb. The leaves are only about 20 millimeters long. And uh, there's Grandpappy. This guy's got to be old. You can't even. Hey, he's about 80 feet tall. 
Okay, here we go. Family's Myrtaceae in the genus is Melaleuca. This is probably one of the coolest ones out there. This kind of looks like an artichoke. You can see it's just starting to flower right there. As you can tell by the dozens upon dozens of stamens coming out. Look at those bracts. Look at that uh, silvery uh, strigosa and dumentum on the uh, leaves closer to the axis. Undersides, I uh, have it uh, especially. Top sides, not so much, just closer to the axis, but... Uh... Oh yeah, there we go. There's a, there's a real nice specimen of that uh, artichoke melaleuca going off. Look at all the bracts subtending. There's actually, again, there's a series of flowers in there. That's the dozens upon dozens of stamens sticking out. There's probably, I don't know, two or three hundred stamens in there. There's an old one. I oh, still got a bud coming out, though. Last year's a flower and then a bud coming out on top of it. You could just say, this looks, looks like a little firecracker. What a beautiful flower. Doesn't smell like much, but uh, probably bird pollinated, maybe. I guess. You, know, you get stamens exerted like that. There you go. So you can see we're just in the open maquis. Open, low-growing, sun-exposed. Much like our California chaparral. See the iron, of course, in the soil. Very nutrient-poor substrate, like I've said about 9,000 times. And up there you got the, a relic stand of Ericaria humboldtensis. And it's about the highest point on this entire mountain. There's not many mountains taller than about 5,000 feet in New Caledonia. Forget where we're at right now. I think we're at like almost a thousand meters. But uh, you see, they, they have nowhere else to go. They, they clearly have nowhere else to go should it dry up, should the climate uh, dry out a little bit. We're in a drought right now, but I don't know. They've uh, not sure how many how many mountain tops they exist on here in the island but uh, only a handful not a uh, not a common species by any means uh, look how cute and uh, subtly dangerous it's a little uh, crevasse or I guess more like a sinkhole that opened up in this uh, easily eroding uh, iron rack the ultramaphics is that a birdie they might be how about that now you know what that could be that apiopedalum again I don't know. All right, here we go. Nice little colony of Drosera. Dozens of them, like three or four dozen just hanging out, you know? They're doing pretty good, doing pretty good for yourself. Holy shit, what a weird plant. What a weird goddamn landscape. What could that be? Is that a Lamandra? Looks like it. I've seen, seen another weird one of those in Australia. One of those other weird monocots. You got a Bopriopsis. Uh, Proteaceae right there. Kinds of weird shit. Don't feel like dying yet. It's actually pretty nice. It's a nice breezy temperature. Okay, now I showed you this plant already. I don't mean to beat you over the head with it, but it is pretty fascinating. Here we go. A tree carrot. Apiopetalum. It apiopetalum again. And with those coriaceous leaves, much like cardboard, yeah, it'd be nice to get slapped around with that, you know? You can think of some people I'd like to slap around with that. There's those uh, apiaceous fruits. So apiaceous. Nice umbels. Looks like the flowers are done already, but they're a real stunner when they're going off. And of course, there's that uh, massive woody trunk. Well, massive for a carrot. Real stunner. This is a very common orchid. We've been seeing this all over the place. The species in the genus Ariaxis. This is Ariaxis regida. I've just uh, never caught one in such a nice uh, stage of... Uh, flowering before again look at those uh look at the petiole excuse me the yeah uh, the peduncle and then the bud are both very voluminous very fuzzy and uh, down there you got you can't even see but you got oval leaves nice to finally catch one oh look it's a beautiful Ariaxis regida this orchid's everywhere, you just rarely catch it, at least we've rarely caught a blooming. 
And there appear to be a bunch of beetles having an orgy in there. Look at that. They're uh, devouring the flower. <laughs> see any good any basil leaves. I don't even see any. Oh yeah, there's a dead one. You can see they're kind of oval shaped. And there we go, there's another orchid. Look at that uh, hinged labellum. It's got all those, uh, I guess those are calli on it. Those little studs. It's a species in the genus Megastylus. Just a nice terrestrial orchid. We're almost up here at the top. You can see it's all sun exposed. You got the uh, more Aracaria humboldtensis over there. Let's check out his basal rosette. I guess it's not a rosette. It's just more of a alternating uh, leaf blades, but uh, pretty nice. Got another one over there. Okay, this is where we'll be rolled out camping for the next uh, two nights. Hopefully it don't rain. I didn't bring a tent. It was too much weight with all the water. But then we got up here and found there's water up here anyway. Anyway, <laughs> here's a nice little orchid. I don't know, maybe he's got a little one. One little leaf blade right there. Is there possibly one over there? Nice mycorrhizal symbiosis, of course. And just the tiniest flowers with a little fringed labellum. Got that melaleuca everywhere. The most beautiful one. Now look at that, you can see the ocean over there. Way out there. Past all the Dracophyllums and the melaleucas and the uh, Cononias. The Cononia macrophylla right there. Nice Aracaria mulleri. Then we got a little interesting uh, drainage right here. Get some shade. This is pretty interesting. We got an Aracaria mulleri seedlings everywhere. And just the uh, epiphytic ferns and uh, other guys just everywhere. Some sort of epiphytic monocot, perhaps an orchid, perhaps an astelia. Freezing idiot. Look at yeah, that guy. It looks like an orchid. That guy. I mean, you got little ferns. Oh, some nice lichen too. Uh, it appears to be a podocarp. Could this be a falcatifolium or a retrophyllum? So on this little drainage, you can see it uh, gets some shade, plant life changes. Got some tiny little epiphytic orchids just hanging out on this, uh, whatever this shit this is. Is this a rubiaceae? Some kind of... See those little bastards? And we got more of that cladonia everywhere. That ground lichen. It got some interesting palms too. Looks like uh, more of my autocarpus. Gotta be careful where I step. It's a microsorum or what? Look at this fern. It's an interesting guy. Is there more natophagus? 
Look at that. God damn, look at that new foliage. It's nice. It's pretty nice. Oh, look, it's some styphelia with berries on it. Yeah, okay. I could, I could see the uh, ericaceae in there now. It does, it does look ericaceous. Kind of like a uh, little uh, blueberry. Well, not blueberries, but <laughs> like it's in the family at least. Oh, shit. And uh, these guys. And uh, right there you can see you got the Ericaria humblethensis with those flat, flat tops. No branches down below. And there's a, right there's Ericaria mulleri. And a humblethensis. And quite a few more on that the forested slope behind it. Well, this is a beautiful palm right here. The ridges in between those uh, those individual uh, little uh, stripes of the fronds are uh, a little hairy. Just a massive spike of new foliage coming out too. It's a familiar face, Hachetia australcaledonica, Balanophoraceae. Notorious parasite sticking out like a yellow flag amongst the uh, shady understory of the uh, forest floor. There's our boy humble fences up there. Okay, a few different genera of palms right here. This one's a Basilinia. See with those kind of fan shaped leaves, and you got another palm with these kind of uh, pinnate things going on. And then we got a nice illustration of the differences between uh, Ericaria mulleri on the left and Ericaria humboldtensis on the right, both in a uh, growth form and uh, diameter of the foliage. As you can see, and there's just not the Vegas everywhere. The southern beaches, pretty diverse little uh, music forest there. Okay, standing here at the base of this uh, Ericaria humble tensis, we got another, uh, yet another tiny ass orchid. Tiny. I mean, we're talking leaves, you know, leaves about five millimeters or less. And uh, there's one flowering. Just a tiny little guy doing his thing embedded in the moss. And uh, the end of this uh, tree, I don't even know what the shit. I can't even see what kind of tree it is. Because uh, the branches are about 30 feet above the ground. But that is it. Uh, it's the tiniest orchid I've ever seen. Where'd it go? There you go. The flowers are less than 5 millimeters. Beautiful orange. Does it look like he's got a pseudobulb? I can't, I can't even tell. He's so damn tiny.